Good evening. Politicians are familiar with the idea of midterm blues, but whatever they may say publicly, the more than 200 Labour MPs who'd lose their seat if last night's by-election swing were to be repeated nationally must wonder what Gordon Brown has to do to restore faith in their party and if he's the right man to do it. We'll check the political temperature within all the parties in a moment. First, David Grossman on the aftershocks from last night's big Conservative win. Will this be the gravestone of New Labour? Died Crew and Nantwich 22nd of May 2008. If it is, the man in the black car has played Undertaker. Morning. Morning. Hi, good to see you. Now, where is my new Member of Parliament? <laughs> David Cameron in Crewe Town Centre this morning. Congratulations. Some days to be Leader of the Opposition is to be a bit of a political bystander. Not today. It was a fantastic result. It was a remarkable result. But there won't be one hint of triumphalism or one hint of complacency from this Conservative Party. Because I know that what happened last night, just as what happened in the local elections, is that thousands of people who haven't voted Conservative before decided to come out and support us. Michael Howard, Ian Duncan Smith, William Hague, John Major, none of them managed this. David Cameron has done what no Conservative leader has done since Margaret Thatcher. He's taken a by-election seat from Labour. But what does it mean? Are the voters telling the government to shape up or to ship out? Mr Cameron, how do you know this isn't simply midterm blues? Well, I think you see a big turnout. I mean, 58%, a big turnout. It was a very big positive vote for the Conservative Party and for Edward Timpson. We've still got a lot to do. As I've said, a by-election isn't a general election. We've got a lot more to do. But I think you can see that people want change and they're prepared to now back the Conservative Party, modernised, rejuvenated, refreshed Conservative Party, and say, you can help bring us that change. That's what's happening. It's very exciting, but we've got a long way to go. And does Gordon Brown get it? I don't think he gets it. I'm not sure he ever got it. Okay. But that's not my, that's not my uh, business. 20,549. <laughs> the result last night was nothing short of stunning. Edward Timpson weathered a personally hostile Labour campaign to record a sensational victory. This was clearly both a, a pro-conservative vote and a protest vote. You just need to look at the figures. And we've seen a huge swing from Labour straight to the Conservatives. Liberal Democrats have completely flatlined. Labour ended up with just 31% of the vote. The Conservatives, 49%, and the Liberal Democrats, 15%. That's an almost complete reversal of fortunes from the last general election in Crewe and Nantwich, when Labour were on 49%, the Conservatives, 33 and the Liberal Democrats, 19 the Conservatives' lead last night is very much in line with the projected national share of the vote in the local elections just three weeks ago, when Labour ended up with 24%, the Conservatives 44%, and the Liberal Democrats 25%. The few Labour supporters who stayed to hear the result look crushed. One slight comfort, perhaps, the statistics suggest the problem was not local but nationwide. But what is the cause? Steve McCabe ran Labour's campaign in Crewe. It was a classic mid-term signal to the government. What signal? What were they saying? Well, they were saying, we know we're not going to change the government by this result, but we are indicating to you loud and clear that we are worried about our economic security and we want reassurance from you that you understand that and you're going to be able to tackle our concerns. Today, Gordon Brown was out visiting a hospital. His message that he's getting on with the job reinforced by actually rolling up his sleeves. Mr Brown places the blame for voter anger in Crewe and elsewhere on international economic factors. In short, not his fault. People are worried that um, after 10 years in which standards of living have been rising, we have a problem because of rising oil prices, with petrol prices, with food prices, with gas and electricity prices. Although it's happening in every country of the world, I understand that the message of the British public is clear and unequivocal. They want us to address these challenges and I believe that I can do so, and that is the task that I've set for myself, that we take this economy through difficult times. But should Mr Brown instead just leave? Some Labour MPs are beginning to discuss whether they would be better with a different leader. 
I think if the party is to renew itself, get its policies in line with what the people we represent uh, want, then it is the responsibility of senior members of uh, the cabinet to say we're going in the wrong direction, it's impossible to change in the situation uh, that we're in at the moment, and, and to say to Gordon that they intend to stand uh, for the election. Without that, we're heading for a, an electoral disaster. In Crewe, the Labour campaign office looks a depressing place. The to let sign, a reminder perhaps that no party owns the political freehold. Have no doubt that many in the Cabinet are thinking very hard now about what to do. Look at the list of a dozen Cabinet ministers who would be buried if the swing in Crewe and Nantwich were repeated at a general election. A grave situation indeed. David Grossman. Well, in another political development tonight, the details of several prominent MPs' expenses were made public. They included a £600 claim made by the former Foreign Secretary Margaret Beckett for a garden pergola and plant pots. The claim was partially rejected. The government offered Miss Beckett as their spokeswoman this evening. Before asking her about her garden upgrade, I suggested to her that it was game over for Gordon Brown. I, I don't think that's remotely where we are. There isn't any doubt that the economic situation is bad. It's bad everywhere in the world and it's bad here. Uh, also, we've made some mistakes of our own um, and people have re responded to that. It's not surprising. Uh, there isn't a general election. They decided they wanted to send the government a strong message and they've done it. But, you know, we've had 11 years to warm to Gordon Brown and just looking at uh, the Daily Politics poll, 46% would prefer David Cameron as Prime Minister, only 23% Gordon Brown. Voters don't like him. No, I, I don't think that's right. I think, I think there's a phenomenon, which I don't claim to understand, by the way, but I know it exists, that when somebody moves from a job like being Chancellor to a job like being Prime Minister, they have, people have to get to know them all over again. And, and initially, you know, they require to have it proved that this person can work in this new and different role. We had exactly the same problem when John Smith moved but from being shadow chancellor to being leader of the party, but everybody's forgotten that, but I haven't. Dude, don't you accept, though, that Gordon Brown is a terrible communicator? He finds it very difficult to articulate a position of leadership in these very difficult times. No, I don't. I, I think that is... That is the conventional wisdom. That's what it's fashionable to say. I don't agree with it at all. I listen to him at Prime Minister's Question Time with David Cameron and I read the papers afterwards and they say, oh, David Cameron is brilliant. I think he sounds like a, an, a very conceited, overgrown schoolboy. And I think Gordon Brown sounds like a Prime Minister, which he is. And that's what we need in the end to help to resolve these problems. But you just heard the Shadow Chancellor today saying there is a nasty party in British politics, it's the Labour Party. And a remark like that is exactly the sort of thing he has in mind. The, the Tory toff thing didn't work with Boris Johnson, it didn't work in Crewe and Nantwich, and it won't work with David Cameron. Well, I didn't use the phrase uh, Tory toff thing. And, Overgrown schoolboy, though. Well, um, I'm sorry. You ask me what I think about it. That is how, it's nothing to do with trying to... That is how he comes across to me. And then I look at what it says in, in the Telegraph or the Mail or whatever, predictable, you might say, and, and I see, oh, this is star performer doing fantastically. I don't think that's right. But the, I, think, the I think what is happening is that we are seeing someone who is facing very difficult circumstances, but doing in a solid, steady way the job of Prime Minister, and I think that is how he comes right. across. And you're, and obviously yes, entitled to your, you're obviously entitled to your opinion about David Cameron, but so are the voters of Crewe and Nantwich, so are the local uh, election voters, and their opinion of David Cameron appears to be quite different from yours. No, I don't think you can conclude that. I think all you can conclude is that we're in a difficult time, the voters are angry, there isn't a general election. They decided they wanted to send the government a very clear, very loud message because they don't want it to be misunderstood, and that is what they've done. I mean, I'm sure David Cameron will continue to say he's now the person who should be Prime Minister, and fine. I hope it makes people take a much clearer, longer, harder look at the policies the Conservative Party is putting forward, if they can find out what they are, uh, as well as uh, David Cameron as a potential Prime Minister. That would be a very good thing. Do you, is the mood then within your party that Gordon Brown can win the next election for you? And if that is so, where is the evidence that he's a winner? Yes, that is the mood. And the evidence, it lies in all the track record of success 
that we have had with him as Chancellor, we have gone into a difficult period, there is absolutely nothing to say that provided we listen to the electorate and learn from the, their clear desire uh, to see a, a change of course, um, there's nothing whatsoever to say the result of the next general election is set. I've heard people say today, uh, this is the first by-election the Tories have won in 25 years or whatever. We won a lot of by-elections in that period. We didn't win all that many general elections for a long time. Are you, are you not worried, though, that you would lose your own seat on a swing replicated like that in Crude and You would. That's a safe seat. And, oh, I never take any election for granted. I fought six general elections before I had a majority above 1,500. But I'm not taking anything for granted about the next general election. Never have, never will. And losing is not something I'm taking for granted either. Uh, just a final thought. It's a personal one. Your expenses. Can you, can you explain why you claimed £600 for plants and a pergola, a claim which was partially disallowed, even though you're perfectly entitled to make that claim? I didn't come on to talk about this issue. Uh, I haven't seen the material that's published. We're talking about stuff that was many years ago. All I'm prepared to say about it is that there are rules with regard to these things, and you obey the rules. But a, a pergola, plants and a pergola. You obey, taxpayers wonder you what, obey what on earth you're up rules. to. And you obeyed the rules. I always do. Mrs Beckett, thank you. Thank you. Publicly, Gordon Brown continued with business pretty much as usual today, but behind the scenes, the party's riven with discussion and dissent. Paul Mason's been asking Labour insiders on camera and off camera, what options does the party and the government have left? We have to answer the question, what is a Labour government for? Those were the words of one of the party's most senior officials to me today. The problem is, Gordon Brown thought he knew what it was for. But something's changed. Even in the Labour heartlands, they're switching to the Tories in droves. Problem number one for Gordon Brown and his inner circle is does anybody in there actually get it? Among all the people I've spoken to today from within the Brown camp, nobody was prepared to accept that the political battle has moved off the terrain of the policy initiative and onto the terrain of gut feeling. He has a very strong narrative, and this is the strange thing, he has a, a bucket full of policies uh, on everything from apprenticeships to, to, uh, you know, to schools and hospitals. But it's not getting over. I think it's the way he presents it rather than what he presents that uh, has caused this uh, change in mood. I was told today that discussions are underway for a restructure at number 10. The tension between...